Hi, everyone. Is this working? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Um, so, um, thank you for coming. We're uh, today we're uh, presenting on the uh, the joint uh, telco solutions, um, Red Hat and Dell. And uh, my name's Sanjay Aigari. I'm a senior solution architect for telco at Red Hat. And I'm joined by Drew Schulke of Dell. Thank you. Yeah, Drew Schulke. Um, I work in Dell's networking business, and I'm responsible for our NFV practice. So uh, today we're going to talk about how uh, Dell's solutions and Red Hat's solutions fit together to build an open telco cloud, and what are the uh, benefits of uh, using our solutions. So with that, uh, let's uh, start with a little uh, bit of introduction to Dell's uh, telco solutions. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm putting up a slide here to kind of just talk about who we are. I, everyone came to a Red Hat session, so just wanted to spend a little bit of time in terms of our approach and what we are working with Red Hat philosophically very closely aligned in terms of how we're approaching virtualized solutions for the telecommunication space. Um, what you're seeing up here is our purpose and belief statements that we've had for the past three years, and I'm not going to take you through it word by word um, in terms of what our corporate mission is, but I think if you look fundamentally is our design principles that we've had in place for over three years right now are very much aligned in terms of what we're going to be talking about here today, which is we always take a very compute-centric approach to everything. We understand that software-defined is the motion that this industry is headed in, and we understand that everything needs to operate at cloud scale. And I bring that up because I think you're going to see it come through here in a few in a bit in terms of the tenets that we're driving collectively in terms of our approach to things like NFV. So if you advance on and we kind of think about our future ready solutions and what we're trying to bring to market with Red Hat, um, you hear a lot of people talk about CapEx and OpEx in terms of what we're trying to balance out. And, uh, you know, in typical fashion, you, you build a two by two quadrant and you want to be in the upper right and no, no mistake here, that's what we're trying to do with this chart as well. But I think kind of framing it up in terms of where we've come from a telecommunications industry and looking at the legacy in the lower left hand corner, thinking about the monolithic systems in which hardware and software were tightly coupled together, um, drove a great degree of specialization, especially around the vendor specific technologies and the lock in that came along with it. As we've moved into this space where things have become more virtualized and we can take advantage of things like cloud and, and NFV, we've seen some of our competitors in this space move up into this chart and what we're calling new proprietary solutions, which is, okay, congratulations, we've virtualized everything, but we're going to define every element of the stack all the way up through the top. And, you know, to me, it's kind of an N minus one proprietary approach. You're still going to get that lock-in penalty and you're not going to get as much choice, which is where we all have the opportunity here. At the same time, if I contrast it in the lower right-hand corner, it's not like we can now just move to this model where you take a bunch of bent metal hardware, throw it over the fence, and things are going to work together. It takes more work than that. It takes relationships between hardware companies and software companies like Dell and Red Hat to put together validated solutions that we know will deploy into the field easily, that we know will work together, and that we know we can drive the right interoperability ecosystem around it and that's what we're calling the future ready solutions in the upper right hand corner where we're trying to attack both the OPEX and the CAPEX problems simultaneously. Uh, and to this end, I think we're philosophically very much aligned between Dell and Red Hat. So um, if, if we uh, take a look at what telcos uh, want to achieve in this environment, uh, it's really around uh, more than just uh, changing the hardware on which they're running it and running it on something else. They, they want to really bring in new, new technologies into play. And that means, for example, uh, be able to turn up a new customer very quickly, not have a six month installation time for getting everything working. I mean, that's just a very basic thing that could increase velocity in terms of uh, how telcos can operate. Uh, and when we've talked to our customers, we find that by and large, they definitely want to do this. They want to move to a more flexible model. Um, and so bringing in the new technologies uh, into that environment is, is really something they're looking at now. And it's the right time in the industry to do that. 
Um, Drew. Yeah, and in, in addition to that, there's this need for new services and business models that are coming into play. And I think look no further than what's going to be required in terms of new services as 5G begins to deploy and really, really take hold. Um, as you open up the aperture of the bandwidth of those devices at the end, that instant access you know, mentality that most of us had today, coupled with a greater level of bandwidth, is going to drive a, a, a need for a whole new suite of services that many of us have not even contemplated today. And so what we try and think about in terms of all of our approaches here is thinking about the agility um, in terms of deploying new services and business models to go drive growth and revenue growth. Um, it's not just a cost play, it's a top line play as well. Um, and we like to keep that top of mind as well. Yeah, and in terms of the competitive landscape, it's never been more competitive because for the longest time I, in this industry, it's just been do what you've been doing. But now with uh, you know, uh, new service providers providing voice, I mean, people are uh, making phone calls, never using the telco's voice network, right? I mean, this is reality. Um, people are uh, watching videos without, you, you know, without using, uh, with just using over the top solutions. Um, and not using cable TV, for example, right? I mean, that cutting the cord, very common. So, so now, with that competitive landscape, uh, how, do, how does the telco become, continue to be relevant uh, in you know, five, 10 years time? Uh, how do they sort of bring, bring that kind of agility back to, into their, uh, their solution so that there can be a uh, more competitive environment? So uh, if, we, if we look at, you know, where, where, where they're going to start, right? Um, they've started with some very basic uh, scenarios of virtualizing what they already have. Um, we know that, for example, you know, IMS have been, has been virtualized um, more and more. You're, you're seeing EPCs uh, with uh, some, some of the new players in the Evolve Packet Core um, winning with software solutions. Um, you're seeing, and of course, virtual routers uh, being deployed for customers so that you don't need to put in a physical router and incur that additional cost and time. Um, so this is, this, is, this, is where, this is where things start. And uh, as long as all of, these, all of these can be deployed in a standardized and scalable manner, then there, and they can be deployed sort of in a multi-vendor manner so that you're not tied to buying all of these components, all of these software components from the same vendor. That's where you can have uh, that advantage of being able to plug and play and bring in new services very, very quickly. So um, I think that's where um, that, and that's where when we work with Dell, uh, we find that there's a way to really, really test all of these kind of things, all, all of these environments, put them together. Um, and they're a very good partner of ours in terms of validating all of this. So uh, with that, I think we can uh, give you, we'll give you a little bit of a sense of what is it that uh, Red Hat and Dell are selling. Um, from Red Hat's perspective, uh, what we sell is, I mean, everyone knows that we sell subscriptions for Linux, but um, beyond that, we have an OpenStack platform, an OpenStack distribution. And this is really now being, um, being tuned for NFV deployments. So all of the uh, all of the te technologies are really being designed so that everything co-works together. And this is important. It's important to have solutions where you have different uh, components that are uh, tested and validated together. Um, part of that is, of course, our storage platform. We're contributing to the open daylight um, and uh, obviously uh, our hype, the KVM uh, hypervisor is in there as well. Now, 
where it gets where it gets interesting is that beyond beyond that core, which we sort of illustrate down here, um, there are a number of places where there's a desire in this industry to go beyond just running virtual machines. So um, with Atomic Host, we have the capability of running containers. And then to tie it all together, um, there are a lot of environments where middleware becomes really, really important uh, in a telco environment, where they've got just hundreds of different processes, services running, and tying them together becomes really important. Um, it's a challenge, especially if you bring in the um, dynamic nature of having multiple, uh, multiple vendors supply the core infrastructure, then trying to make all that work uh, at the top layer and manage it, it becomes more difficult and needs a sort of um, a management system that's very dynamic. So with that, um, Drew, would you like to talk about Dell's components? Yeah, and, and the only thing I would add to it as well is we, we talked early on in terms of driving the ecosystem and making sure that interoperability is, is very front and center in all of this. Um, and, and this week, you'll, you'll see an announcement coming out um, of a joint effort between Dell and Red Hat and Tech Mahindra to stand up a laboratory in Bangalore in one of Tech Mahindra's facility that is going to be running exactly the platform that you see here. Uh, with the goal of driving the ISVs that are creating all the virtual network functions that you see there in as an opportunity that they can certify on this platform and we can collectively start to build out that ecosystem around it as well. So it's not just a platform in and of itself, but it's also what are we doing to collectively drive people that can come in, run on it, so that if somebody's trying to stand up one of the use cases we talked about earlier, there's a known good starting point that we know things are going to work well. Beyond that, where we spent a lot of time in investing um, is in making it a, a confident experience in terms of deploying this platform. Um, and, and I don't know if any of you have had the experience of trying to stand up a, a proof of concept for network function virtualization, um, but if you don't have a good set of ingredients and a good set of directions, it can be a very, very uh, 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 frustrating task. Um, and so what we've done is invest in, one, the creation of of a reference architecture, so there is a known good set of ingredients between Dell and Red Hat that we start with, um, very clearly calling out the versions that everything they need to be at. And then we invest a lot of time in very detailed deployment guides from also the hardware, from the OpenStack platform, and then something we call the virtual infrastructure managers, which is a, an element that we added from a Dell perspective uh, to bring in some extra fabric management capabilities which are reflected in the lower right-hand corner of the stack. In terms of what's underneath it and running it all, it's our standard x86 server base, which is capable of supporting both the compute and the storage aspects running Ceph. And then our Dell networking switches, uh, which support our, our, uh, our Dell operating system. But we can also pull in a number of our partners as well in our open networking approach, where we've worked with a number of third-party network operating system providers, such as Cumulus and Big Switch and Pluribus. And so those are options that we can bring to the table as well from a network operating perspective, network operating system <coughs> perspective. Okay. In terms of how we can fulfill it and bring it to market, we know there's not like one path by which these projects go. Um, and there are situations where we work directly with Red Hat to go to customers and have those conversations. Um, but there's also a lot of great many times where we work with some of the more traditional network equipment providers who have great relationships with these carriers and have a very strong services presence there and want to be part of these uh, solutions that are deployed. Um, but then we also have a strong, what we call an ecosystem perspective, where we have partners in the management orchestration space, partners that are systems integrators. Um, and again, this is what we think, it, we're all about choice between our two collective companies. It's not just about a technology, but it's also about in terms of how we can bring these things to market and deploy in a manner that you would feel comfortable with, be it working directly with us working through a network equipment provider or working through a systems integrator. All options that we're willing to attain and all options that we have done um, in, in support of our customers. So kind of tying all that back to kind of um, some of the business priorities versus technical priorities, we talked about this need to deploy new services and scale at speed. Um, just to kind of drive that home, I was at a, an event last week where um, one of the lead network uh, uh, ex executives from one of the big carriers was speaking 
and they talked about the time at which it took to deploy a 10 gig or 100 gig circuit. Um, just by maybe shouting it out, what do you think the, the baseline is to deploy in a new 10 gig or 100 gig circuit in a very well known tier one telecommunications company? 90 days if they escalate and get everything to go right. <laughs> um, it, I mean, not far off, um, it's four to six months is the typical range, right? Um, how long does it take to deploy a new piece of uh, network equipment in the central office? Two years, yeah. Yeah. So, so this is what we, when we talk about in terms of you know, the, the agility and what we're want, trying to go in terms of deploying new services, it's also the infrastructure behind it and being agile on that. But coming along with that, we also know that there's a pivot of employee skills that needs to take place as well. Um, and people have a lot of time and, and, uh, and equity and certifications on certain uh, equipment and certain equipment from certain vendors. And this is a very, very different approach which is gonna require a skill set pivot. And, and there's no great easy answer there um, as well. Uh, some people are gonna have a hard time resisting that. Um, you know, even if, even if firms take a lot of time and try and drive that training that's necessary to go do it. Um, kind of our experience in terms of what we've seen good success in the field is when the carriers take the, the resources that are in this and involve them from day one in terms of defining what this new virtualized network function is gonna look like. Um, and have them involved in design and the proof of concept and deployment as opposed to waiting to the end to bring them over. Uh, but that's just the business priorities. There's also the technical priorities. Yes, so what we've found that uh, really to develop an open telco cloud, a modern open telco cloud, they, they've got to modernize the way that the applications are, are developed and deployed. I mean, I think we all know this, uh, moving more to a cloud native type of application development. And this is, this is a big change. It's not just taking what's already there and virtualizing it and putting it in the cloud. So um, that's, that's, really, you know, that's really the first, the first, the first piece of this. Um, it's absolutely essential that everything be kept available. That goes without saying in the telco environment. But availability means something different now because um, it used to be that uh, five nines meant that your hardware had extra redundancy and you had all kinds of fancy technologies in the hardware to ensure that. Now it's about service availability and how do you keep the service up regardless of what's happening underneath. And this is the way pretty much every cloud scale environment is running. Can, how, do we, how do we bring telcos along to also develop along those lines? And finally, um, for this to all work, it's really got to be open, uh, open for plug-in of different types of capabilities and technologies. And it's also got to enable the business priorities, which means we need to be able to do more than just what's already been done in telco networks. That means be able to gather data from the network, do some analysis on that data, feedback and dynamically change the way your network operates rather than wait for trouble tickets to come in. Um, so with that, I wanna leave you with a sort of a vision for an open telco cloud that we, we've been talking about at Red Hat. And what this involves is, is thinking about the application as uh, more than just a virtual machine. It's really, uh, taking the OpenStack platform, realizing it's not just OpenStack, but you've got a network layer underneath it that the telco has deployed. You've got, in fact, most of these operators have mobile networks and more and more applications are being mobile first. So that has to be a key part of this. How do you enable security all the way down from here, all the way down from the mobile access layer up through the OpenStack platform and even up to the application. The application is not actually running on OpenStack. The application is a collection of scaled out virtual machines or containers that are tied together by a middleware platform. I mean, that's, this is how it's worked in enterprise for years and years. Um, we're now realizing, um, you know, telcos are realizing that they've got to start developing applications this way as opposed to uh, the one application per box methodology. Uh, or one application per VM methodology even. It's got to change 
to this type of environment. And so um, wh what we can offer is a consistent support model for the tools needed for all of these components. Um, whether you're using the various components of JBoss, whether you're using the various components of OpenStack, uh, whether you're using Ceph for storage, um, we're using RHEL as an operating system, and you're using uh, Dell hardware and the Dell fabric. All of these can be consistently supported, uh, and you can plug in whatever functions you'd like to plug in. I'd also like to call out the fact that new business models and new operational models can be invented once you do something this way, because now if you have extra load on your network and your network can feed back events back, uh, middleware events essentially, back up into your application. Your application can adjust its behavior. If you think about video streaming, for example, video streaming is something that a lot of times it's done today by flooding the network with as much as possible and then seeing if it worked. And if it didn't work, and you say, oh, well, I got to down res that video, right? Well, what does that do to the network? If everyone's doing that, is you're flooding it, right? So it would be better to be able to have a feedback mechanism. What, so what we're talking about here is creating an infrastructure whereby this is possible. It's not solving and saying that, oh, we already have software that does all this. I mean, it would take a lot of companies to build all this. But what we're saying is this is the basic infrastructure that would enable, uh, that would enable developers to build these types of new applications that leverage uh, that, that leverage these capabilities and enable new business models and new operational models. So uh, uh, with that, uh, we're happy to uh, take any questions. Uh, and if you don't mind, if oh, you yeah. can step to the mic because they're recording it and we want to hear what you say. Don't worry, we won't film you, we just want to hear you. Hi, this is Fatih from Ericsson. Yeah. The main point, at least for me, going towards the cloud is the utility-based computing, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning you will pay as much as you use. When the mm -hmm. things come into the service provider or the product provider side to the Dell and Red Hat, mm -hmm. especially Red Hat, there is nothing new in Red Hat side for by means of licensing. If you look at, even if you try to use Red Hat OpenStack Distro, it gives you 30 days of license for two sockets. Even there is no open source version like in the CentOS case. When you go by means of scaling up, you have to do the ups, you know, upstream or preparation of investment before you utilize this infrastructure. That's one question. Is there any, any new licensing methodology that you foresee in NFVI for Red Hat? The, uh, my second question for Dell, are you guys really collaborating by means of oh, beyond of certification? How about optimizing this stuff? Right? When you do the CPU pinning by means of virtual machines, how about, how, how, how about the worker thread pinning in the CPUs? Is there any, any effort that you plan to do? Thank you. So, um, so in, terms of, in terms of licensing, I mean, look, this is, Red Hat's been um, creating you know, a lot, obviously, talking about NFV you know, and bringing in a lot of new focus into this effort over the last year. And, Certainly, uh, in terms of in terms of uh, different types of subscriptions, and we you know we don't really call it licensing. We you know we refer to it as a subscription and subscription model. Um, if uh, you know, it is a change to move from a uh, pay per CPU, essentially, or per socket pair model, to a pay per usage model. Having said that, uh, there are a number of ways that we work with customers on these, on these um, subscription models. Um, and not every, you know, it's not always locked in to the model that was stated in the question. Uh, now, you know, but those are, like every company, there are, there are individual deals that can be worked out. Um, on the second question, um, you're talking about CPU pinning specific I, I didn't really get that. I mean, C CPU well, pinning specific to Dell? Dell together for, yeah. uh, okay. More much in detail other than CPU pinning. How about thread pinning? How about process pinning? Okay, so pro thread and process, again, again, pinning, pinning to a individual CPU. 
individual CPU core. And so I, I'm trying to understand where, where that particular question, wh what you're asking of Dell in that, in that question. So if, you're, if, you're, if your Dell hardware doesn't allow you NUMA or CPU pinning, then you can't do this. Now we're talking about containers, right? Containers mm -hmm. within virtual machines. Containers yeah. in digital processes, they represent individual processes. If you cannot do the pinning per processor yeah. per container, yeah. So, so first of all, first of all, let me explain the current state of this. Is uh, with Red Hat OSP eight, um, we're still operating with virtual machines, right? Not containers. So let's be clear about that. So we're not claiming that, and there's a reason for that because we, if if we don't have something that's delivering what you're talking about, then we can't come out and say, hey, we support containers in, in a V, right? We're talking about, so with containers in this presentation is presented clearly as a vision that we want to get to. I mean, obviously, everyone wants to get there. But as Red Hat, we have to make sure that what we deliver does provide what you need to actually run the stuff. And if we can't do that yet, then we're staying where we can deliver, which is with virtual machines. Yeah, the only thing I said is in terms of just the work we do collectively together, it's not just the validation. We actually have a, a dozen developers at Dell that work on Red Hat, basically as an extended team of Red Hat. Um, in terms of the kind of things we work on though, I'll, I'll be honest, the majority of the focus lately has been on deployment capabilities. That's an area we think we need to go off and address. In terms of what we would do to make the Dell hardware better, we would try and be very careful to balance that we wouldn't want to do anything bespoke to us, because I, then I put this in the lower, in the upper left-hand corner of the box that we said we don't want to be in, right? Um, and we want to make sure we're always working with Red Hat to drive it back into the primary distribution so we're all on the same page on all of that. But that's kind of where our focus has been lately on deployment, reporting, and manageability. Hi, this, this is Asi from Nokia. So since this is talk is more from an NFV point of view, so my question is more specific and more from a Dell point of view. So, and first thing is, this is, this is great initiative. So that definitely this is a growing area. So my question is that, are you guys f are considering to use any other platform, hardware platform other than x86, which could be more friendly with the network functions? Are you considering on it? On the in, compute side? On, or? The, on the bare metal, on the, on the lower level, because you are providing the hardware platform to Correct. my understanding. Yeah. So are you considering anything other than x86? I mean, we, we, con we consistently look at alternative architectures. Um, and, uh, and I was actually part, completely coincidental here, I was a part, four years ago, we announced a, uh, a proof of, it was a proof of concept system. We didn't create revenue off of it with a 32-bit ARM processor and a server we called Copper. And we made it available to labs and ISVs to go off and play and test around with it. Um, and so we consistently look at that, and we still have more POCs that are non-X86 that are out there running today. But to date, we've not announced anything in terms of a product level or you know anything we would go off and sell and, and, and create revenue off of other than X86. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a statement of where we are today. Will we always continue to look at those alternative technologies? Absolutely. Um, but x86 is the platform that we're on today from a compute perspective. So, so, so very same question for, uh, from a Red Hat point of view. Are they considering anything on the top of the Red Hat Linux that that could be helping to be more, more performance-wise better when you, somebody is running the network function, like a virtual router you gave an example mm -hmm. use case. Yeah. So running that one on a virtual machine, mm -hmm. which is not maybe friendly to the network function or forwarding yeah. and those, so are you considering to add any layer or changing in the, the way right now the status is that it could be more efficient in future? Yeah, so actually that's a good question because um, uh, very timely because just, uh, just last week I was on uh, a panel at the, um, uh, at the uh, God, which conference was that? <laughs> last last well, week in San Jose. NFP, and, NFP, NFP World Congress. NFP World Congress, sorry. Yeah. I've been to so many of these. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, was, I, was on, I was on the FDIO panel. And uh, so there is, there is uh, an, an initiative where uh, you know, many players in the industry are looking at uh, in, in use cases, specific use cases, where they need that type of environment that they could leverage things like Intel DPDK to get better performance. And that is, you know, that is supported, uh, but also understand that that's not something, that's not a, 
silver bullet that you put everywhere and say, well, use, this, use these technologies everywhere because then, you know, by and large, most applications work well by running on the standard, with the standard Linux kernel networking, but there are certain applications that you could get better performance by doing specific things. Yeah, I mean, and your question was kind of, kind of hardware and performance, just there's other things to go look at outside of your underlying CPU architecture. There's, I mean, there's some companies doing some really interesting things around SRIOV offloading, open virtual switch offloading, right? Which basically are delivered in the form of a PCI, you know, express compliant NIC, right? So you're not having to kind of fundamentally upend the architecture effort to go get what can be, you know, orders of magnitude gains in performance for a given use case um, off of all that. So, I mean, that's, if you've not looked at that, that's an interesting place to go look as well. I think you're going to see a lot of interesting things coming through there in conjunction with FPGAs um, that could really optimize on the hardware side. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, with that, thank we you. thank you for your time.